My task this morning is to compress 104 years of life into less than 10 minutes, so say a little prayer. <laughs> In a book that I read this last year, there were a couple sentences that really caused me to stop and think for a bit. And it said that each one of us is actually two persons. There's the person that we know ourselves to be, and then the person others know us to be. That's so true, and since Bob is no longer with us, it's going to be up to the rest of us to tell about the Bob that we know. I know that those of you who have come from Vantage House, uh, you have been with Bob as his neighbors for the past, what, two decades now, I guess, some of you. And I know that your house was renamed uh, more recently now since uh, the past few years. It is now called Vantage Point, and it's actually very appropriate today because each of us from our vantage point will be able to tell about the Bob we knew. Those who are his own children, his grandchildren, his stepchildren, you have your vantage point and it's from that perspective that you can tell about Bob. Those who may have worked with Bob here, I don't know if there is anyone here, or those who have been treated by Bob as a psychiatrist, um, you have your perspective. And then there are those who have lived with Bob, those of us who went to church with Bob week after week, and we have our vantage point. And I'm in that final group. For some reason or other, many years ago, Bob asked if I would give the eulogy at his funeral. I rather suspect it was because he knows of my unabashed bias about his goodness. <laughs> and that's my vantage point today. <laughs> after all, I think that's the way all of us want to be remembered after we die. Now, I've always believed that perfume should not be announced, but instead be discovered. And I believe the same goes for the best among us. These people don't announce their goodness to us, but instead we come to know them, discover them, through the special goodness of their lives. These are the people who sometimes perform those random acts of kindness that the bumper stickers often encourage us to do. Some of them suffer silently. Many of them are great partners in marriage, always wishing they could do more for their spouse. Some of these people are the ones who stand up for justice and truth, not to shout another person down, but instead just to talk calmly in a conversation about their convictions about what is fair, what is right. That's the kind of Bob that I knew. That was Bob McAllister to me. To many of us here, he was a saintly sort of man. Um, those of us here in church he called us his shepherds. I think we were often more like his fan club. But to many of us, he was a saintly type person. And not all saints are perfect. Most are flawed human beings who just try to overcome a great deal in their life. And I think Bob worked that way as well. He was born and raised in Montana, a cowboy. That state is also known as Big Sky Country. And I always believe that it was there that Bob first came to be so open-minded. He was a pioneer like his parents were pioneers. He wasn't the kind who was just content with whatever was close to him and that he would live in a limited kind of space there. Instead, he was the first in his family to go to college, initially up in South Dakota, then, and for somebody who lived in the far west, all the way across the continent to Washington, D.C., where he graduated from medical school at Georgetown University. I think after Bob became a psychiatrist, again, there was just something about him that continued to move him around. Initially, he practiced here, 
Then he got a call to work in a veterans hospital out in Reno, Nevada. And then all the way to almost the west coast in Tacoma, Washington, where he served for a while before he returned back here. Again, a true pioneer, always on the move, not one to settle down and last forever or put roots too deeply in the ground. And I think he was also a pioneer in the field of psychiatry. He was one of the first group of psychiatrists who emphasized the fact that emotions are neither good nor bad. They just are. And for his clients, what a tremendous relief to know that they are not what they feel like they are sometimes. They're more than that. They're better than that. And that was Bob's message to them, to all of us. I think those of you who, again, were at a vantage point with him, those of us who know him well, um, we were always struck by the fact that he was such an outstanding listener. People even over in the mall used to stop and talk to the guy. Right? And again, there was just something about the way he enabled us to pour out our thoughts, our hearts to him. We could even tell him what we disagreed with in the church. And he just absorbed it with reverence and respect and appreciated us for who we were. Physically, Bob used to absolutely amaze me for his age. I know when he was 93 years old, with two of his sons, he climbed a mountain that they could see from the home place there in Montana. The mountain was 5,864 feet in height. They not only ascended it in one day, but they came down the same day. No easy trick for an old guy. But he did it. I remember he used to take yoga class, exercise class over at Vantage Point. He often walked the stairs instead of taking the elevator up to his room. And I believe, even up to the age of 100, he used to walk around Lake Kitakamundi almost daily. Throughout his uh, professional career, and even into his retirement, he used to write constantly. He has left us poetry, articles in the newsletters, even wrote entire books. I remember in his very personal account of his caring for his wife Jane after she had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. He acknowledged how difficult it was to actually care for her day after day. And in one of his entries he wrote, Jane told me how good the day was being with me. And just before she drifted off to sleep, she said, someday I won't even be able to tell you that. And then Bob added, she slept, I wept. In another entry in this diary-like account of caring for Jane, he spoke about massaging Jane's feet so that she could get a little rest that night. And when I read that, I was reminded of Jesus kneeling down, washing the feet of his disciples. There were some strong similarities between those two men. After Jane died, Bob became, for a while, the oldest volunteer who ever served the poor, the hungry, at our daily bread over in Baltimore. And then another day, he called me and asked if he could come with me to my volunteer work at Habitat for Humanity. So I picked him up early one morning. We drove over to Patapsco Avenue in the Brooklyn neighborhood of Baltimore there. And we worked until the middle of the afternoon. That day, the temperature was the same as his age, 95. This good old saintly man used to sit right over there, that first chair in the second row. I know in arenas, sometimes the fans reverence their superstars by retiring their jerseys and hang them in the, hanging them in the top of the arenas. And I've often wondered if maybe here at St. John's we could retire the chairs of those saintly people who <laughs> sat in our midst day after day. I know that's not possible, but at least we could leave those chairs open 
for when family members come and pray with us again. At the beginning, I said, I honestly believe that during a person's life, um, it's better for our goodness, our holiness, if you will, that it should be discovered, not announced. People who wear their religion on their sleeves are oftentimes rather off-putting, to me at least. But those who, whose goodness comes out of their pores, those who are known by their gracious deeds, their understanding smiles, their accepting manner. Those people are like fountains to us, and we are drawn to them as we were drawn to Bob. We want to come to them and be refreshed and renewed. We want to drink in their goodness, their love, and that is why we who relished Bob while he was with us in this life come today to return Bob to the God who made him. Our prayer is that God will bless each of us with the ability to become the best of Bob.